Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'll be building a web app in Node using the Express framework and then adding PostHog to that app. Express is one of the most popular Node.js frameworks and one of the most popular JavaScript frameworks overall. Adding PostHog to a Express app provides features like auto capture, custom event capture, feature flags, session recordings, and more. And I'll show you how to set up all of that in this video. Let's get started. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to make sure you have Node installed. I'm running Node version 16.18.0. And if you don't have that installed, you can install it from nodejs.org. And then I'm going to install Express. And I'm also going to install EJS, which will be our view engine. And that will allow us to render HTML templates with data we want to provide them. After we've installed both of those, we're going to create a file called server.js, and then we're going to create a directory for our views, our EJS views to live in, and we're going to go into that views file, and we're going to create a view. And this one's just going to be called index.ejs, and we're going to go in here, and we're going to just create a basic page. It's just going to have a title, my blog and then a body and it's just going to be a he heading that says my cool blog we're going to save that and now we're going to write the actual code to serve this file so to write the server code we're going to have to require the it's the express code we're going to have to set it as an app and then we're going to set our port as 3000 and we're going to set our view engine as EJS not pug EJS and then we're going to write our basic home page which is in the base directory and that's going to render the index that's great and then we're going to run port 3000, we're just going to console log that the app is listening to port 3000. So we're going to wrap this up here. We're going to save that. We can go back to this file and we can run node server.js. And then you'll see it's running on localhost 3000. And we can go into our browser, go to localhost 3000, and you see we have my cool blog here. So this is great, but we're going to want to add more content here. So to do this, we're going to kind of create a mock database and it's just going to have a list of posts. So it's going to be title, cool post, and then the content is going to be, this is a cool post, that's great. And then we're going to create a second one and it's going to be post hog is the best and the content will be post hog is the best. I mean it. It's really good blogging content here and we're just going to wrap that up there and save that and then we'll include this in the rendering of the main page so we're just gonna add that and we're gonna say posts equals posts and we're gonna change this name because that was the wrong name so that's great this is gonna add a posts uh, post data to the rendering on this main page and now we have to include that in the index EJS file so the nice thing about index EJS is that you or EJS in general, is that you can use some JavaScript for loops to loop through the posts, and then we'll get the title and we'll get the content here. And this will let us show all the posts in this, in this kind of index page. And yeah, we'll relaunch the app and then I'll show you what it looks like. So you see in this app here, we'll zoom in a little bit. We have 
both of our titles and both of our pages. So we've added a bit more functionality here and we'll continue adding some functionality. The next thing we're going to add is a form. So to add this form, we're just going to include it below the loop of posts. And we're gonna go form method post and its action is going to be slash email slash. And we're gonna close that out. And then in the form, we're just gonna have a label first. And that label is going to be for the email field. And it's just gonna say email. And then we're going to have an input that has the name and ID of email. And we're gonna add a placeholder as well. This is email. And then we're going to have a submit button and we'll save that. And then we'll go back to our server.js file and write some code to handle this form. So to handle that post request, we're going to have to write a new route we'll write app.post and it's going to be the email route as we saw there as we wrote it and email and then we'll just console log the email from the body of the request rec.body.email close it out there and then this is hanging out and then we'll close up this that's great. And there's one other thing. We're going to have to add some middleware to our app to let it handle the URL and email. So we're going to add express.url encoded. And then we'll set that extended as false. And we'll save that. And then we'll restart our server again here and we'll refresh here. We'll click submit. And now when we go back to our terminal, we see that our email has been console logged here. So we'll use that in a bit to get more data about our users with PostHog. Um, but for right now, we have kind of the functionality we want. We're showing off some posts and we have an ability to get data from users. So the next thing we're gonna do is add post hog. And so to do this, we're gonna go to our post hog instance. We have a new project here. We're going to add the code snippet, the web code snippet, and we'll just copy this script tag here that we can add to our index.ejs, the header of it. We're gonna copy that in there and press save. And then we'll start up our server again and go back to our blog. And we'll click around, we'll click submit a couple of times, we'll refresh, and then we'll go back to the ingestion wizard, we'll click continue, we'll listen for events, they've sent successfully, and we'll see we have some events in here. We have page view, form submit, input, you get a lot of nice events here. With the auto capture that the snippet provides, you also can set up session recordings by going into project settings, scrolling down and enabling record user sessions. But if you want to use feature flags, custom event capture, user identification, you're going to need to use the library. And luckily we have a node library that we can use and also show you how to set that up now. So back in our Express app here, we're going to install post hog node and we're going to go to server.js and we're going to require post hog here. And then we are going to create a client with post hog. So this is going to be new post hog. And we're going to get our project API key from our snippet. Super nice there. And then we're going to have our host not as localhost 3000. It's going to be app.posthog.com.
and we'll save that there. And this is the node library setup. So this won't do anything without us triggering the client, but we can create a custom event to, to trigger it and we'll do that next. So we have the email being sent to our post route here, our email route. And right now it's just console logging and that worked as we saw earlier, but what we actually want this to do is capture an event. So we're gonna run client, which is the post hog client and dot capture. And then we're going to have in here distinct ID and that's going to be the request dot body dot email. We're going to have an event and the signed up and then properties of the email is going to be their request as well. So we have it easily accessible and then we're also going to add a redirect so that we don't get stuck on that email page and we'll save that and we will restart our server again. And we'll go back to our blog and we'll submit our email here. And then we'll go into post hog and it's going to take a little while for the event to show up because it's a new person. So after a little while, you'll see that we have the event that come in. The signed up event has come in from Ian at posthog.com from posthog node. But what you'll see here, this is great. We've set up custom event capture, but the difficulty here is that these two people are both me, but they're being treated as different persons. So we can connect these two by aliasing the two. So we're going to use cookies from the front end that gets sent in the request to the back end. And then on the back end, we'll use an alias call to combine these two together. And I'm going to show you how you can do that. So the next thing we're going to do now is set up that alias call. And this is going to first require us to parse the cookies. So we're going to install a cookie parser. And then we're going to add cookie parser as a requirement here. Great. And then in our email post route, we're going to, oh, we're also going to add the cookie parser here. So we'll add it as middleware app.use cookie parser. Cool. And then we're going to set up our client dot alias request here. So this first requires getting the anonymous ID, which is the ID that wasn't with my email. And that's going to be JSON dot parse. And then we're going to get the request cookies. And we're specifically going to get one that's called ph underscore we're going to get our project ID here and then underscore post hog. And then this one, we want the distinct ID from it. So it's going to be then distinct ID. And we have that there. And then we have to Uh, remove this period here and then we'll use this anon ID to write the alias call so this sends an event that connects the two and our distinct ID is going to be the email body and our alias is going to be anonymous ID so we'll do that and we'll start our server up again And then we'll go to our blog page again, we'll refresh, we'll submit the email again. And then you should see an alias event coming in here and the events are connected under one person. So after a little while here, you'll see an alias event in here. And then if we click this person, you'll see now that there's a one more person here and we have the anonymous ID is now connected to the Ian at posthog.com. So these two people are now one person and any events sent by either of them are connected together. 
So the last thing we're gonna do is we're going to set up feature flags. So we're gonna set up a feature flag here that shows a CTA if it's enabled. So to do this, we're gonna go into our post hog instance. We're gonna create a new feature flag with a key of blog CTA. We'll save that there. We'll make sure it actually has a rollout condition of 100%. So this is rolled out to 100% of users. That is good to go. Then we'll go back into our Express app and in the base get request, we're going to one, make this request async first by just adding async there. And then we're going to say, let enable CTA equals false. And then we're gonna check our cookies. So this is gonna equal rack.cookies. And then we're going to get this value from down here because we want the same cookies. That's great. And then if there's cookies, we're going to get the distinct ID from the cookies by parsing them. And then we're going to um, change enable CTA to check based on uh, is feature enabled. So we're gonna call the post hoc client with the is feature enabled flag. And we're gonna check the blog CTA and we're gonna use the distinct ID. And then we're going to close that out and we'll include the enable CTA in the render statement, the render method. And then finally, we'll go to index.ejs and we'll add our CTA here. So this is going to just be a simple if statement. If enable CTA, then we'll have a link that goes to post hog and then it just says learn more. So that's great. We'll make sure that we have a close to the statement because that's important. That's great. We've added an extra little bit there and we'll save that and then we'll restart our node server. We'll go back to our blog, we'll refresh and then you see we have the learn more statement here. We'll do one last thing to test it. We'll remove this feature flag or we'll set the rollout condition to 0% and then we'll go back to our blog and you'll see that the CTA has disappeared. So that's feature flag set up for us as well. So that's all for this tutorial on how to set up a basic web app in Node and Express and then add Postdoc to it. We set up auto capture, session recordings, custom event capture, feature flags, and user identification. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this, or you can find more tutorials like this at posthog.com slash tutorials. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.